Hey there, fellows. People often wonder what would happen if you filled the engine with twice the oil that it needs, or even more. Anyway, we've got an engine, so let's find the answer to that very question. Let's do this. One more time. Check out what we got here, guys. This motor is a factory stock unit, we've cut out a window, and we've routed the exhaust manifold out of the way for us to have a clear view. Now we just need to give the system a flush in order for the oil to be nice and clean for better visibility. Then we'll replace this regular sump with one made of plastic and we should be golden. We'll start by giving the motor a flush. Check this out. We've got everything assembled, the oil pan is on there, now we'll be able to see how much oil we got in there, and uh, just have a clear view of the internal processes. We'll start by putting in the required amount of oil, then we fire the engine up and see what happens with the oil. Okay, so the oil is on the max level. It goes right up to here. Ok, let's start by simply turning the engine over. We'll look on and see how the pump performs its duties. How quick it picks the oil up, see what happens to the level. Let's go! So the oil level has started to drop. And here we see it returning into the pan. You can tell by exactly how much the level has dropped. The pump has picked up a certain amount of oil, it was transported upstairs to lubricate the cam and the crankshaft, and only once there was a surplus did it start to drip back down. The level has dropped, but if we wait for a bit, you can tell that it's slowly dripping down, and it'll be back to baseline soon enough. Ok, so we've seen the oil circulate with just the starter motor working, now let's start the engine. Look at how the oil is circulating. The oil level has dropped dramatically, the pump is spinning way quicker, it's picking up a lot of oil, and the ladder isn't finding its way down quick enough. Yeah, there's only a tiny bit of oil left in the pan. There's barely any at all. The important thing is the oil pickup is surrounded by oil, so there is more than enough to suck in. And with the oil not being warm enough, it takes longer for it to drip down. 
it's still a bit on the thick side. That's not a lot at all. Let's see what happens when we bring the revs up. See what's happening? The pumping has intensified. And though the reduction valve is doing its thing, but the oil level has plummeted. We got more oil getting picked up and sent back down. It has begun to foam, bubbles have formed, though it's nothing too horrible. And now that we've shut this off, the oil level is slowly returning to where it was initially, to where it was after we just poured it in. Now I suggest we double the amount of oil. We'll check the dipstick to see the difference between minimum and maximum, and add exactly that much. Well, let's go. So check this out, we've poured in some fresh oil, twice as much as required, and you can definitely see the difference. The oil pan is almost completely full, and I suggest we kick this off by simply turning the engine over using the starter motor. Let's have a look. Yeah, we are definitely on the edge here. Nope, there was no contact. Even though it's really close. That's with double. And let's try firing it up. It's idling just fine. Yeah, the oil level has dropped. The gap between the oil and the crank has increased. To all of the folks who worry that something might go wrong, I mean, yeah, the engine is stationary, sitting in the same position, it's not moving around whatsoever, but even if you were to shift the engine around, there's more than enough space for the oil to splash in any given direction, because, well, if I can reiterate, there is a ton of space between the crank and the pool of motor oil. and the oil level continues to decrease. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. You can clearly tell... Can you see the oil sort of jumping? As if it's trying to find its way up the engine block. At this point, we've established that nothing bad happens when you double the amount of oil in the sump. But we're not done just yet. Let's pour some more oil in. So here's the situation. We were at the very limit, and all we did was add about another 700 grams. And we can clearly see that the crankshaft counterweights are ever so slightly dipped into the oil. Also, the bolts that secure the crankshaft main caps are oiled up. And there's only one way to find out uh, what comes out of all of this. Wanna give the engine a spin? And we see oil getting sprayed onto the block, it's not evacuating. The crankshaft is picking it up and splashing it around. Yeah, it is thoroughly drenched in motor oil. Okay, so at such a low engine speed, we're witnessing the simple process of the crankshaft picking up the oil and distributing it all around the block. No adverse effects to report. I 
The picture is pretty much the same as when we had double the required amount of oil. At some point, the crankshaft blows the oil away, and it no longer comes into contact with it. Now I suggest we really push the envelope and add some more oil as so the crankshaft is literally smothered in motor oil. So we do that and from there we see what happens. Now right, let's do this. There is a ridiculous amount of oil inside the engine, I mean, the bearing caps are submerged at this point. Okay, let's go. Yeah, as you can see, the oil is being splashed around like crazy. That's all down to the crankshaft and the conrods dipping in way deeper than before. Splashing way more oil around. Yeah, now it's really splashing around, look at that. The crank is quite literally submerged in the oil. And you can see air bubbles developing and uh, pretty big ones. Also, you have got an endless stream of oil splashing onto the block. Yeah, the bubbling is actually all you can see, really. But let's bring the revs up. And so what do we see? There is way more foam forming, and we got more oil splashing onto the engine block. And you can tell that the crank can no longer blow the oil away, instead it's actually picking it up. It's picking up a ton of oil, throwing it around, and as a result we can't uh, really see anything. Hey, at the very least we can see it splashing around, and you'll notice that engine operation has become somewhat less stable at idle. Go get some more oil, Sergey. Check this out, guys. Things have gotten interesting. You can see that the oil goes all the way up to this little window. Yeah, at this point, the oil level is just crazy. There is way too much in there for the good of this engine. But let's give the engine a turn without starting it and see what happens. Yeah, oil level is just way too high. The engine block immediately gets filled and you can't see a thing. It was started like a charm. But now you get the impression that the entire engine block is filled with oil. I mean, it's literally filling the entire engine block. You don't see any empty spaces, and that's pretty neat, I'd say. Anyway, we can plainly see that the whole thing is filled with oil, it's all good. But let's bring the revs up, curious to see what happens. It's as if we filled this engine with milk instead of motor oil. And we got oil coming out of the breather. I mean, the engine is overflowing. You even got it pouring out with the engine idling. Give it some gas. Yeah, the breather is a full-blown geyser.
So here's what's going on, guys. The oil level is actually above the center line of the crankshaft, meaning that the entire crank, the journals and so on, all of it is submerged. I suspect that we're looking at a total quantity of over 12 liters. But we're not stopping just yet, let's keep on going. Oh, that is just lovely. The engine does not care how much oil is in the sump. It's running even though it is at idle. Is it actually gonna keep running? Check that out. Do we have a leak somewhere? No, it's just that I'm looking at this cool vortex. Anyway, we've stuffed the breather tube into a canister, and so now... I guess we try... It's running like an old diesel. It is producing a lot of smoke. Oh, that is not good at all. What's the problem? We have got an oil leak. But that's hardly a surprise because, well, instead of crankcase gases, you got liquid oil circulating in the ventilation system. We saw some spitting out from the tube, but the engine still starts and runs. And that is just terrific, hats off to this thing. And so while the engine was running, which wasn't for all that long, it was no more than a minute maybe, I'd say. And already we got a good leader inside this pitcher. And there's more in the canister. Just like I said, there's no ventilation of the crankcase occurring at the moment. Instead, it's motor oil that's circulating. But let's pour this back in and get the level even higher. What do we got here? I see, better not touch it. So look here, guys, at this point you remove the dipstick, and immediately you got oil pouring out. Nobody in their right mind will ever pour in this much oil, but we have for the sake of the experiment. So far we've established that when the oil is at normal level it all goes into the engine when it starts, twice overfilled is no big deal, three, uh, also nothing terrible happens. But now we're as high as we can possibly go. And now let's try starting it. It runs, that's good, but we have a leak. And given the situation, we'd better give it some gas while we still can. Is it a massive leak? It will be soon. Yeah, this is totally insane, man. Better stop at spewing oil. Yeah, I'm gonna need a rag. Get the flashlight out. Yeah, yeah, please do. Oil everywhere. It is good for rust proofing, though. Very nice. Get the power units out of here. And here's the situation. The plastic... transparent oil pan has given up. The point is, it's leaking oil badly. And so the oil has found a weak point with how much excess oil we got in there. If it so happens that you poured in a tiny bit more oil than required, well, uh, there's nothing to worry about, really. So you saw it all, that's all I got for you, catch you guys later.